assholes, they always get away. Shit, he's running. He's running? Which way is he running? Down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay, which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. He had no choice but to use his weapon. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Okay. Well, I certainly think that celebrities have as much right to speak as anybody else. And just because they've got a lot of influence and a lot of fans doesn't mean they should keep quiet. Now, Will Smith tweeted... We live in an America where a girl threw flour on Kim Kardashian was arrested on sight, but the man who killed Trayvon Martin is still free. Will Smith, I totally agree with your premise. Uh, the woman who threw flour on Kim Kardashian, in my opinion, was doing something noble. She was speaking out for voiceless animals who were skinned alive for fur. She gets arrested right away, but a neighborhood watchman who's walking around with a loaded weapon, which is violating the first rule of neighborhood watch. You're not supposed to walk around toting a gun. They don't even do, in my opinion, a thorough investigation. They don't really initially treat this as a serious homicide case. And that's one of the reasons why there's so much outrage. So, Will Smith, right back at you. I agree with you. But my main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. When you look back at what happened, was there a lot of pressure on you to make an arrest? There was um, pressure applied. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, the city manager asked several times during the process, uh, well, can an arrest be made now? Um, and I think that was just from not understanding the, the process, the criminal justice process. I had one of the city commissioners come to me on two different occasions and say, you know, all we want is an arrest. And I explained to them, well, you, you just can't do that. You know, um, you have to have probable cause to arrest somebody. And uh, you know, the, it was related to me that they just wanted an arrest. They didn't care if it got dismissed later. And uh, you, you don't do that. On the night of the shooting, February 26, 2012, police took Zimmerman into custody for questioning, but later let him go. Your lead investigator, Chris Serino, suggested manslaughter on that initial police report. Mm -hmm. Why is it that, you know, for 40 plus days, George Zimmerman walked a free man? The, the laws of the state of Florida and the Constitution require you to have probable cause to arrest someone. The, the evidence and the testimony that we had didn't get us to probable cause. New information coming out of Orlando this evening in that case now generating outrage across this country. Brewing nationwide outrage over the shooting death of an unarmed Florida teen shot and killed by a community watch member. After enormous public outcry, police released a 911 tape this weekend. The tape's raising new questions about that tragic night and why the shooter has not been charged. Uh, another black teen murdered in cold blood. With no justice, I know it's cold blood. Ain't nobody standing up for us. It's time for us to stand up for us. I ain't talking about reacting in violence. And I ain't talking about just sitting in silence. We gotta pull our resources together. They gotta see us standing strong together. The Martin family can't stand alone. 40 million strong is the reason I wrote this song. This is spark a new beginning for blacks. Trayvon won't die in vain, now that's a fact. And this killer will not go free Cause we gon' legally disturb your peace We can't afford another Rodney King Cause ain't nothing changed since Rodney King We want just this, just this, just this, just this We want just this, just this, just this, just this Whatever led up to this, anything you want to tell me about what happened and why it ended up, what it ended up to, to um, where this, this, this boy got shot. This, okay. The neighborhood has had a lot of crimes. Um, 
my wife saw our neighbors get broken into and she got scared. Are you talking about the residents or vehicles? The residents. Okay. While it was occupied. Um, so I decided to start a neighborhood watch program in my neighborhood. Okay, um, what is the name of the neighborhood? Retreat of Twin Lakes. Now, those actions weren't anything sinister or terrible or evil or of ill will. Those were actions that occur throughout the United States in many cities, unfortunately, where crimes occur in the neighborhood and people get together and form neighborhood watches or other associations to deal with it. There's nothing sinister or wrong with that. But in this particular case, it led to the death of an innocent 17-year-old boy. Because this defendant made the wrong assumption. He profiled him as a criminal. He assumed certain things, that Trayvon Martin was up to no good. And that is what led to his death. Trayvon Martin, he was staying, he was there legally. He hadn't broken in or sneaked in or trespassed. He was there legally. He went to the 7-Eleven store earlier that evening. He bought what? What did he buy? What was his crime? He bought Skittles and some kind of watermelon or iced tea or whatever it's called. That was his crime. He had $40 and 15 cents in his pockets. He was wearing a photo button and he was speaking to a girl in Miami. He was minding his own business. But apparently, this defendant decided that he was up to no good, that the victim was up to no good. Why you come follow me? It's self-defense. 
Ain't nobody harming me. The ball black and starving. So you call us retarded. Yeah. Now we building the yeah. skills yeah. like Malcolm yeah. and Martin. Yeah. We don't listen to our sharp no. uh -uh. I'm going to be the star. Right you talking about a circus. We do this for a purpose. Yeah. The world is filled with cluttery. People speaking yeah. utterly. Yeah. I'm about to bow yeah. on. And don't care about who comes. I'm Trey Farmer. I'm Trey Farmer. I'm Trey Farmer. I'm Trey Farmer. That tragedy in Florida, the 17-year-old shot dead by a self-proclaimed soldier in the neighborhood crime watch. The shooting has ignited a national debate about new laws allowing citizens in more than 20 states a lot of latitude in deploying deadly force. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Florida tonight. So, Mayor Triplett, do you want to answer? Where the chief is, could he be here to answer questions? Tonight, after 10 days of silence, city leaders forced to talk. There have been allegations of misconduct in the investigation by the police department. If there were mistakes made, we're, we're going to handle that. And we're intensifying after the death of an unarmed black 17-year-old, Trayvon Martin, shot by Crime Watch volunteer George Zimmerman. First gunshot. That moment caught on this call to police who accepted the shooter's claim of self-defense, triggering the anger Sanford Mayor Jeff Triplett met head-on today. But the allegations of misconduct or possible missteps heckled who didn't get to answer. But it's not just the mayor and police that are being questioned tonight, but also a seven-year-old Florida law called Stand Your Ground, giving enormous leeway to people like Zimmerman to use deadly force if they feel threatened. Since the law, justified homicides in Florida have jumped threefold. Twenty other states have similar laws, but Florida's is seen as the most extreme. The courts here challenged by some of these cases, including one in which a man was shot dead after a playground argument over a skateboarder. The author of Florida's law now says it's being misused. This gentleman is on very thin ice claiming this is a defense when he's actively out there pursuing and confronting uh, another individual. The law, he says, was meant to protect law-abiding citizens, not vigilantes. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Sanford, Florida. After all the news that's come out about this, you know, uh, one side or the other, I think all the facts of the case have been made yeah. public by the prosecutor and all that stuff. How do you see this whole thing playing out? Let the, let the court system work. Um, uh, I'm sure Zimmerman's parents are devastated as well. I'm sure everybody is devastated. I'm sure that that moment where he had an opportunity to change direction, I'm sure he will go back a million times and do it, but we can't. So that being said, let the court, let the, let, let the prosecution and, and the defense, you know, plead their case. I have my own opinions about everything. I, I say like, like, like the stand your ground rule, you know, I just, I have a problem with it because if you can manufacture something, and I'm not talking about the case now, but if you can, if I could come up to you and manufacture a situation and then, and then be able to get away with it, I think that, that rule of that law is, it, it, it needs to be addressed because that could be to anybody. That could be your mom, that could be your father, that could be your kids, cousins, friends, anybody. I think that's just... You know, that's a, a slippery slope for people to have that type of power and to actually be able to annihilate someone and go home and, and go to sleep. That's not how I think the, the system should work.